we offer thanksgiving. Thanksgiving and praise and joyfulness unto our Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name
cheveux, des rênes et ça. Il va à Thoughts and the 
gonna take a little while yet. But next week we got some uh, good speakers coming in, and praise the Lord, they're going to minister to the congregation. I called him up the other day and said, Well, I've been planting a lot of seed. Now I need someone to come and water it down. Can you say amen? Where God will give the increase. Isn't that what the Bible says? One waters, one plants, but God gives the increase. And so this is how it works. And so next week, our, my friend from many years of ministry together, uh, he'll be with us in church. He's retired now. He's not pastor anymore. So he's kind of free to kind of get around. And so we're inviting him and his wife to come. So we're looking forward for the Cougars. Now tonight, if you can make it to Newmark, uh, Brother Strug is from uh, Rosewood area will be preaching. And I think they're starting at 6 o'clock. And uh, so we're just praising the Lord for that. Amen. Uh, we're just praising the Lord for Brother Strug to step over. And Pastor called me and said, Pastor, can, can we do a, a, a fellowship type meeting? I said, sure. Be more than happy to do it. So you get a chance tonight. If you want to drop over to Newmark Church of God, they'll be having a church there tonight, fellowship meeting. So I think they'll probably be having refreshments and things like that afterwards. So it'll be a good time to fellowship. Amen? And uh, you probably never heard Brother Strachan's preaching. Phenomenal speaker. You guys will really enjoy him. One of these days when time is able, I'd like to have him come here and maybe uh, speak a few days at you guys. He's a very highly anticipated, talented speaker, and not only that, but he's very talented in his music and his life. Uh, she's a, uh, quite a piano player uh, and worship leader at their church, and they pastor a church about 300 people or more, so it's a pretty good sized church, and uh, he plays the saxophone. How many like people that play saxophone? Uh, he might play that tonight. Uh, I would be a bit surprised if he might bring it over and play it. And uh, he's quite a saxophone player. And uh, so anyway, uh, we're going to be getting together through the summer months and having some fellowship meetings. Might have one here. Uh, probably will. We'll probably have one on a Sunday night. Uh, probably, if not uh, next month, month, maybe the month after. But we'll, I figure we'll go support theirs and then we'll have one here. And I'll have another speaker come over too. And uh, well, we'll just have some fun together. Is that all right? How many looking forward to fellowship? Amen. Having fun together, praise the Lord. Amen. But today we're talking about mothers. Oh, how important mothers are. Oh, I'll tell you what. The Bible did, God did a wonderful thing when he gave us a mom. Can you say amen to that? And so I praise the Lord. Let us uh, bow our heads and you pray with me today that God will touch this moment as we come to it. Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. And as I speak on this Mother's Day, God, I pray that, Lord, that you have your hand up on your people. And Lord God, I pray for each and every person in a wonderful way. Lord, I ask you now, bless this hour, bless this time. And Lord, uh, let us hear what the Lord will reveal to us. Let my thoughts become your thoughts. My eyes become your eyes. My heart become your heart. That I submit all my faculties to thee. Oh God, that I submit myself to thee, O oh Lord, and to thy Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. He that hath an ear, she that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit will reveal to them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. What the Bible says about mothers, can you say amen? As I continue this series, amen. You guys didn't see this one coming, did you? Uh, I put something different last week. <laughs> and so we'll get into that down the road. But the Lord wanted me to bring this to you today. Blessed to be mom, what the Bible says about what? Motherhood. As we continue, Mother Day has come again. And no doubt it's a good day to celebrate. Moms are so important, and the Bible speaks lots about them. Although many of us here today have lost our moms because of age, we can still reminisce since the memories of those good old days of our early childhood. How do you remember? Your mom's still getting on to you. Hello? 
Or, guess what? You fell down like Brother Jeff said, and she kissed that bruise on your, <laughs> on your head or your elbow or your knee. How many remember those days? And so I remember those days too. So today's sermon is what the Bible says about mothers. Amen. <laughs> what the Bible says about moms. Amen. As we continue today, first mom was called Eve, believe it or not. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 20, and Adam called his wife named Eve. Because she was the mother of all living. Eve was given two names by Adam. The first was the generic meaning, which is woman. Later, after the fall, Adam gave her the proper name, Eve, being Adam, referring to her role in the procreation of the human race. So, guess what? Our first mother, believe it or not, was Eve. She was the mother of all living, the Bible says. It all began with her, and we, I'll let you know, it's an important part. You remember the story, God took a lot of bone. He caused a great sleep to come upon Adam, and the Bible says he took a rib from his side. And when he took the rib, he made a woman out of that bone. Adam said, this is bone of my bone. He said, I'm called man, so I will call her what? Woman. And this is how the beginning of God's creation began. God created Adam first, but yet he saw that Adam needed some help. He said, you know, it's not good for him to be alone. So I'm going to create him and help me. And let me tell you something. When he first saw her, he was excited. And I want you to know that. I don't know about you. I still get excited. When Sister Brooke gets home, can you say amen to that? And you should. You should get excited when your husband or your wife comes home. And so anyway, I get excited. I'll say, how's your day? And she'll tell me all about it. I said, my feet hurt right now. I said, you want me to rub them? No, no, no. Don't rub my feet. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> no, no, <don't> rub them. <laughs> Just leave me alone. <laughs> Let me rest. <laughs> and so anyway, I'll go back doing my thing and she does her thing that. But our first mom was called what? Eve. Yeah. Eve. And if you'd like to put another letter on that, you can put the word R and be ever. Can you say that? E is ever. And so I want you to remember that. Amen. As we continue today, the second mom in the Bible was called Sarah. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 15, And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. So he said, guess what? Second important mom in the Bible is, believe it or not, is Sarah. Eve was the first one. Sarah was the second one. And you're probably wondering, who is the third important woman in the Bible? Well, you are. You're the third important woman in the Bible. Amen. God didn't leave you out. Amen. He didn't leave you out. He he wanted you to know that you're blessed. Amen. You're special. And so I want you to remember that today as we continue. Amen. As we continue thirdly, we're to honor our moms. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Honor thy father and mother, and thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. I found out if you're a headache to your mom, guess what? You're not going to live very long. I'm going to be honest with you. You're going to get beat up really bad by your dad. So, guess what? Best thing to do is love your mom. Respect her. Amen. Amen. Whatever she says, you just do it. Amen. I found that out the hard way. How do you know what I'm talking about? She said, I want you to go do this for me. And guess what? If I didn't do it, guess what? She'll tell dad when dad got home. And guess what? Dad will make sure I will do it the next time real good. And I found that out. Dad was always... Uh, her way of making sure she got uh, obeyed. Can you say amen to that? 
And so I want you to realize this. We're to honor our moms. We're not to be a neck pain in their necks, but we're to honor them. We're to love them, cherish them, hold them in our hearts. Can you say amen? I don't know about you, but I love my mom. How about you guys? Amen? I miss her. Uh, I can't call her no more. But I know where she's at. I know she's in heaven with the Lord. And guess what? I know that she's doing well. Because she went to be with Jesus. I believe that. How about you guys? That's where your moms are at. If you still, if, unless your mom is still living to them. And some of you do still have your moms. And that's, praise the Lord for that. Amen. Call her up today and let her know you love her. Amen. It's important that you call her up on Mother's Day. Amen. As we continue, moms are precious. They give up a lot for us. I can't even imagine the hours of sleep and rest they forfeit for all of us. All the time we were sick and watched and nursed us all back to health. No wonder why God gives us all wonderful parents. Because this is what moms do. I can't imagine all the hours of sleep my mom lost. <laughs> I know how many hours my wife has lost over our daughters. Quite a bit. I used to remember it was many times my wife would be uh, several weeks in Portland staying with Pam because there was no one else to do it. I had to work. So she would go back and forth to Portland. And I would go up on the weekends and, and try to be there with her while she went through all these surgeries and procedures. I'm so glad those days are behind us. Not too long ago, Pam had a procedure, and guess who went with her? Her mom did for almost 10 days. It was 10 days. And I tell you what, that's love. Can you say amen? When someone will, will put their life completely to the side, and guess what? Zero on you and your particular needs. That's love. That's love. That's not selfishness. That's love. And I remind my daughter all the time. I said, don't give your mom a headache. You say, yes, ma'am. Amen. Because <laughs> she's done so much for you. Amen. And uh, I don't know about you, but uh, this is what it is in my family. Amen. As we continue today, God doesn't like it when we abuse our parents. Exodus 21, verse 15. And he said, he that smited his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. In those days, let me tell you something. You, didn't, you just didn't do these types of things they're doing today. I've seen kids just absolutely beat on their mothers and, and uh, you know, watch it on videos and, and things like that. And I said, oh, how ungodly. I said, if that was in the old days, they'd be taken out and beaten down. You know, say amen or oh, amen. Amen. They would be beaten. And uh, today we've got such a disrespect for motherhood. How many can agree with that? Mom should be honored all the time. Right. You shouldn't be abusing your parents or talking back at them or, or saying things, <laughs> cursing them out. Or you. Your parents are blessed by God. The reason he blessed your parents where they could have you and me. We're their offspring. And we should honor our fathers and mothers. And we, sh we should uphold them, especially our moms being Mother's Day. Amen. As we continue, it's important to do what mom says. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not what the law of thy mother. I tell you what, when mom put her hand out, that was it. <laughs> I couldn't get out of it. But she said no. That meant dad was going to back it up and say, your mom said no. Don't ask again. If you want to change her mind, my mind, you've got to go change her mind. How many remember those days? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't our society be a lot better off if we were still working by those rules? Yep. Our jail houses would be emptier. Our prisons would be empty. Because why? The dads are enforcing mom's law. That's it. No. 
You're not going to go out and stay all night long in someone else's house. I don't know those people. You're staying right here. How many remember those days? <laughs> no. I said no. You don't need to be over there. You don't need to be involved with those people. You don't need to even be involved with that situation. I mean, I see those boundaries come up over and over and given by your mom. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. My son hears instruction by father. And forsake not the law of thy mother. Amen. Number five, who can find a wife and obey? Proverbs 31, verse 10. Who can find a wife and noble character? For her value is far more than rubies. Her husband heart has trusted her. And he does not lack the dividends. She has rewarded him with good and not harm all the days of her life. I can truly say that Sister Chris has never done any type of wrong towards me. She always has done right. Even though what I'm about to do might be wrong, she would reassure me and say, I don't think that's the right thing to do, but I'll support you no matter what. If it falls apart, it fall, we fall apart together. Did you say Amen. that? How many ever been there? Yep. And your wife very hesitant about buying that. No. I've been looking at something here for a while. And <laughs> my wife told me, don't look at it. She said, you got one just like it. It breaks down all the time. <laughs> Go buy you a new one. And then it won't be breaking down. You won't be frustrated. Do you understand what I'm saying? A lot of times. Well, we try to save money. You know, I can buy this a lot, lot, lot cheaper. Well, that's the reason why it's a lot, lot cheaper. It's because it don't work as good as a new one will. Do you understand? And so our lives are very wise. And sometimes we are not careful. We need to listen to that inner voice that God has given us through our help. <laughs> Amen. So God, that's why God gave us life. Give us that inner voice we need. We help bring direction in our life. In the same way with the husband. For the wife. Amen. That's why he gave wives husbands. To give that inner voice. To bring what? Check and balance into the marriage. Amen. And today we, we need that. We need that check and balance in our relationship. We need to be able to rely on each other, care for each other, and encourage each other, and help each other. And it's the same way with moms with children. Children need to bless their moms. Because this is what God said to do. Bless your mom. Amen. You tell your mom she's doing all right. It ain't going to hurt you to say, Mom, I love you. Mom, you're doing all right. Man, Mom, I can't believe you raised all of us. That sure was a lot of work. I don't know about you, but I came from a family of 10 kids. I don't know how my mom did it. Wow. Taking care of Pam has been at least seven or eight kids by itself. <laughs> Shall be as frontless 
between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 through 9. That's quite a passage of scripture, isn't it? Amen. I like that. I found that. And I want to read that. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 through 9. God wanted you know, to know that you are blessed. Moms are really important, so let's remember that. Your mom's still around. Call her up there. I know Brother Jeff's mom's still around. Is that right, Brother Jeff? Amen. He's probably going to call her later. Go by and see her. Amen. And uh, some of you got a mom there. Your mom's still around, right? Have you talked to her today yet? Yesterday. Well, I'm going to call her again. She called me. <laughs> That's all right. Now, I know some of you and your mom's gone. But guess what? Your kids are still there. And it's important that your kids call you and let you know how much you need to them. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think that was the last slide, wasn't it? Happy Mother's Day. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is in her tongue. Proverbs 31, verse 27. Hope you enjoyed this today. Amen. Would you pray with me? Oh, Father God, we thank you right now. And we pray for our moms, and we're thankful for our mothers today. Blessed is mom, because God gave her to us. And Lord, we're so thankful for our mothers, our wives. We appreciate you, Lord. We ask you to go with us. Be with them. Nurture the moms today. Just encourage them. And I pray that the children would just call them and just praise their mom and just let them know how much mom means to them. And so, Lord, we're so thankful that we can be together with all these mothers. And so, Lord, we ask you now, in Jesus' name, that you bless this hour. And Lord, touch each life. And Lord, thank you for letting us come together. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you stand with me as we say a departing prayer? Father, thank you for being here with us today. Go with each and every person. Walk with us and be with us, Lord. Take us to the highways and the byways, O God. And Lord, I pray for every family, God, that you bless and nurture them. I pray for all the mothers that they enjoy this happy Mother's Day.